In this class, you will learn all about the past perfect tense. Now, this tense is an advanced tense, but it's not hard to learn. We're going to make it easy because this tense will actually allow you to talk about things that have happened in the past in a much more interesting and powerful way. All right? Now, this class is part of the series created by Ingvid to help you master all of the English verb tenses step by step. Okay? So, are you ready to begin? Let's go. So, the past perfect tense is sometimes called the past of the past. Let me explain why. So, let's look at this timeline. All right? So, this is now and let's say it's 11 o'clock. So, everything before that is in the past. So, if we look at these sentences, we could say, the meeting started at 9. Okay? This is one sentence right now. Here's another sentence. We arrived at 10. Now, right now, this is not past perfect. These are just two simple sentences in the simple past or the past simple, right? The meeting started, we arrived. These are past simple sentences and they're two separate sentences. But we are now going to connect them in a certain way. Let me show you. So, the past perfect sentence would be like this. When we arrived, right, at 10, the meeting had started. So, had started is the past perfect tense. So, what does this tense allow us to do that this one did not allow us to do? What it did is it allows us to show or talk about two or more things that happened in the past and we want to show which of those things happened first in the past. All right? So, in this case, what happened first? 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Okay? The meeting started at 9. That happened first. So, whatever happened first, we express in the past perfect tense. The other part of the sentence, if you have it, can be just in the past simple tense. We arrived. But when we want to show what happened first, we use the past perfect tense. So again, we use the past perfect tense when we're talking about two or more things, both of which happened in the past, and we want to show which of them happened first in the past. The one which happened first is the one where we use the past perfect tense, like here. So now, let's just look very quickly and basically at the structure of this tense. It's easy. So we have the subject, I, you, we, they, he, she, it, doesn't matter. And with all of them, you only have to learn one helping verb, had. It's the verb have in the past tense. And then to that, we add the third form of the verb or what is called the past participle. Right now, don't worry about all that. We're going to go through all of that as we go along. But I've just written a few examples so you can see it. So it would sound like this and look like this. I had worked. That's if it's a regular verb. Or I had gone. That's an example of an irregular verb. Okay? So these are the basics and now we'll understand more as we go along. Now let's look at when we use the past perfect tense. So we use it to talk about two or more things that happened in the past and we want to show which of those things happened first. So when we say first, that first or before can mean a short time ago, a long time ago, or mixed times. Okay? Let's look at some examples. So we have this example. Before the guests arrived, some things had been done, right? So we can say, before the guests arrived, we had cleaned the house, had cleaned, past perfect, we had ordered pizza, had ordered, and we had made 
dessert. Okay? So, this part is in past simple. Just that word arrived. That doesn't matter for what we are focusing on. But this part matters. These are the parts which are the past perfect. And by saying had cleaned, had ordered, and had made, we know that the person did those things before the guests arrived. All right? Now, one point. In order for you to learn it, I am writing each time we had cleaned, we had ordered, we had made. But it is possible that in real life, when you're writing these sentences, you could just say the had once. So, for example, you could say, we had cleaned the house, and this had is going to go for everything. We had cleaned the house, ordered pizza, and made dessert. But when you say that, by putting the had first, it means we had cleaned, we had ordered, and we had made. Okay? But you can also write it as many times as you need to. It's not a problem. Let's look at another example. By the time Maria moved to Canada, she had done some things, right? So let's see what they are. She had graduated from university, had graduated, past perfect. She had learned English, had learned, and she had worked as a teacher, had worked, okay? So again, this part with had graduated, had learned, had worked is the past perfect tense. And this part is the past simple. That's okay. Now, in this case, we had three regular verbs, all right? In this case, this was regular, cleaned is regular, ordered is regular, but made was irregular. So we had to use that third form, which we're going to look at a little bit more later. Let's take one last example. When the president came to power, the economy had improved. So we see here, had improved. The currency had strengthened. And unemployment had decreased. So, the economy had improved, means it had become better. The currency, currency means what? Like the dollar, the euro, the pound, okay? Had, the currency had strengthened, means it became stronger. And unemployment, the number of people not working, had decreased. It had gone down. So again, this tells us that these things had already happened when the president came to power, okay? Now, another point is that when you have this kind of sentence and you want to use past perfect, then you don't have to always have two parts of the sentence. Sometimes somebody might have asked you a question and you're just giving the answer. So if someone says, for example, what was the situation when the president came to power? So then you could just say, well, the economy had improved, the currency had strengthened, that unemployment had decreased. But you're saying that in the context of the question that was asked earlier. So these are the main ways in which we use the past perfect and when we use it. Now let's look at how we form the past perfect tense. So, the basic structure is this, subject plus had plus past participle. What does that mean? Subject means one of these words like I, you, we, they, he, she, it, or anything else like Mr. Jones or the school or something like that. Then you have the helping verb had, only had, that's the form you use for everything, all the subjects. And then you have to add the verb in the past participle. What does that mean? Well, it's different for a regular verb and for an irregular verb. For a regular verb, the past participle is just the same form that you would use in the regular past simple tense. Like work becomes worked, right? Dance becomes danced. Study, studied. These are regular verbs, right? 
and in the past tense, those past simple tense, those are their forms, and that's the same past participle form that we use here, okay, with the regular verbs. Now, with the irregular verbs, you do have to learn what that past participle form is. Why? Because with the irregular verbs, it changes. It often changes, or sometimes it doesn't change, and so on. There are all kinds of unusual combinations and changes which you have to learn and which you probably already heard a lot and you know. You probably know many of them. And if you don't know many of them, any good grammar book will usually have a list of these kind of irregular verbs or you can look them up online. So examples of the past participle of an irregular verb are verbs like the verb to go, right? That's the regular, that's the base form of the verb. In the past tense, it becomes went, go, went. And in the third form, which we need here, it becomes gone, go, went, gone. So we're looking for that third form, right? See, saw, seen, like that, all right? Do, did, done. So you need to learn that third form. But once you know it, then it's easy to use this tense. All right, so let's look now at three situations. It's a positive sentence, a negative sentence, and a question, okay? So in the positive sentence, you would just use the subject and say had worked. For example, I had worked. Say it after me. You had worked. We had worked. They had worked. He had worked. She had worked. And it had worked. Okay, it is a thing like a computer or a phone or an air conditioner or something. Okay, and the same thing with an irregular verb like I had gone. So if we had a sentence, uh, we could have said, for example, before he went home yesterday, he had worked for 10 hours. Okay, or when I called her, she had gone to the supermarket. Okay. So that's how we could use that. Next, in a negative sentence, we would simply, we're basically adding not to this, okay? Instead of saying had worked, we're saying had not worked. I had not worked, you had not worked, we had not worked, and so on, okay? And if you want to shorten it, which very often we do, especially when in regular conversation, we don't say I had not worked. We say, I hadn't. So let's repeat that. I hadn't worked. I hadn't gone. Okay? And it would be the same for all of the subjects, okay? With the negative form. Now let's look at the questions. As we know, when it's a question, we have to change the order. So now we start with had. Had you worked for eight hours yesterday when I uh, called you? Okay, something like that, all right? Or had they gone home already when you arrived? Okay, so had I worked, had you worked, had we worked, had they worked, had he worked, had she worked, had they worked. Now, when you're saying this word, make sure you're saying the ending correctly. Worked, gone. Don't shorten it because otherwise it will sound like your grammar is wrong because of the pronunciation, okay? So another thing to keep in mind is that if you need to add a question word, you would add it here. For example, you could say, okay, then it would become like where had. Where had you worked before you uh, uh, joined this company, okay? For example, right? Who had you worked with? When had you worked there? Okay, so anytime you're adding that question word, that's fine, but just make sure you keep this structure, where had you worked, not where you had worked, where had you worked, where had you gone, okay? That's it. Now, I wanna point out a special 
situation which you have to get used to because it's going to sound really strange if you haven't heard it already, which is like here, what was our base verb? Work. And here it was go, right? But sometimes the verb itself that you want to use is the verb to have. Now, so that means you have to use the subject, you have to use had always, but now this verb itself is the verb to have. For example, in the expression to have breakfast, that's the expression. So if you want to use this verb in the past per perfect form, you'd have to say, I had had, okay? So it will sound like this and be written like this. I had had breakfast. When I left home, I had already had breakfast. Or when I left home, I had had breakfast. And it might sound really strange to you say, really? We have to say had had? We have to say it twice? Yes, we do. Because it's just following the same rule. You just take the verb and you put it into the past participle form. And in this case, that becomes had. And so you might see these strange kind of sentences in English where we say, I had had. Or if it's negative, it would be, I hadn't had breakfast when I left home. Or you could ask somebody, had you had breakfast when you went home? All right. Or when you left the house. Okay. Something like that. So just remember that there is this little strange one with the verb to have. And that's basically how you construct the past perfect tense. Now let's look at some common words and expressions that we use with the past perfect tense. So, number one, before we moved, we had already sold the house. So, which part is the past perfect? This part, had already sold, had sold, right? And the word that's often used is already. Okay, so you might see this word used very often and it kind of makes sense when we're trying to express the idea that something happened before something else. All right, next, number two. When she arrived home, she hadn't heard the news yet. So let's find the past perfect part. She had not heard, that's the past perfect, and the word the, time, the expression is yet, means till that time, okay? Or before that time. Now, I've written these sentences in a particular way. I put this part in one line and then the past perfect part in a second line, but in real life, you wouldn't write like that. You would just continue the sentence normally, but I just divided it like that so you can see it more easily, all right? Okay. Now, number three, at the time I joined the company, I had been a salesperson for five years. So, where's the past perfect? I had been, okay? I had been, this is the past participle form of which, which verb? The verb to be. I am, I was, I have been, or I had been been. All right. So the word that is used frequently with this is the word for. For always tells us the period of time. For how long? For five years. All right. Another one. He had lived in New York since 2018. Or we could say he had lived in New York since he was a child. So Let's find the past perfect first. He had lived, right? Regular verb here. And the word, the common word that's used often is since, all right? We have it here or here. So since 2018, so it's always since plus a point in time, for plus a period of time or length of time, but since a plus a point in time since 2018, since he was a child, okay? That point in time when he was a child. All right, next, number five. Before they visited the US, they had never seen snow. 
So, wh where is the past perfect? Here. Had seen, but in this case, had never seen. So, never is another word, okay, that we can use. Sometimes we also use the word ever. For example, had you, had they ever seen snow before they visited the US? Okay, you can use it that way as well. But ever and never. These are other common expressions that we frequently use with this tense. Now, also one small point, a lot of people make this little mistake. It has nothing to do with the past perfect tense. It just has to do with good English. So you need to say before they visited the US. Many people say before they visited US, which is short for United States. But you need to say the US, the United States. All right, don't forget that little word, that article. Number six, we had just had lunch when our friends dropped in. Okay, now, first of all, where's the past perfect? Here, right? It's one of those slightly weird ones where we said had, had, because we're talking about lunch, right? To have lunch, to have breakfast, to have dinner, to have a snack, to have some coffee, to have some tea. We have this expression with lots of foods and drink, food and drink, all right? But the common expression here is the word just. We had just had lunch, means a very short time ago, before or when our friends dropped in. What does that mean, they dropped in? It's an expression too. They didn't drop, they didn't fall from somewhere. No, when friends drop in, it means they came usually to, my, to your house without an appointment or without being invited. They just were in the neighborhood and they decided to see you and they knocked on your door. It doesn't happen too much in North America, but it can happen with good friends, all right? So that is um, the meaning of dropped in. But here, let's look over those key words and expressions. Just, never, ever, since, for, yet, and already. Okay? So now you already know how to use these. Now let's look at some spelling changes we need to make when we create contractions, when we shorten the words. And also, let's see how to pronounce these contractions. So, this is the full form. I had worked. What does it become when we contract it or shorten it in regular conversation? It could be I'd worked. All right? So first what we'll do is we'll look at the spelling and later we'll go over the pronunciation. So, how did this become this? What did we do? We had to cancel this, add an apostrophe in the place where we removed the letters, and then we joined these two words. So, I had becomes I'd worked. So, very often you'll hear people saying that, but when they're saying I'd worked a lot yesterday, that means they are using past perfect. I had worked. All right? So, the same thing will happen here. You had visited becomes you'd. We had seen, we'd seen. Don't worry, we'll go over them again for the pronunciation. First, just pay attention to the spelling. They had found, they'd found. He had left, he'd left. She had bought, she'd bought. Okay? We don't usually contract the it had. We don't say that it'd. You know, it just sounds really weird. So we don't usually use that. All right? So now, first, let's go over the pronunciation of this part. Okay? So repeat after me. I'd worked. You'd visited. Make sure when you're saying it that we can hear that D sound. Because if you don't hear that D, then what does it sound like? Just listen. You visited. That's a different tense completely. You visited is which one? Past simple. 
but you'd visited is you had visited is past perfect, which is what we're learning. Okay, the next one. We'd seen. They'd found. He'd left. She'd bought. Okay, that's in the positive form. We can also contract it in the negative form. I had not decided becomes what? I hadn't decided. So here, again, the O disappeared, the apostrophe came in its place, and these two words joined together to become hadn't. So let's say all of these together. I hadn't decided. You hadn't visited. We'll make these negative, okay? We hadn't seen. They hadn't found. Good, keep saying them. He hadn't left. And the last one, she hadn't bought. Okay, good. Now you know the correct spelling and pronunciation of these. But let's just look here again. So what happened here was that the I had became I'd, right? We saw that above there. But what I want you to know is that I'd by itself doesn't have to be past perfect. It could also be something else. And how do you know that? It depends on the rest of the sentence. Let's look at the example. So here, I'd could be, could mean, I had returned the book already. That's our regular past perfect, right? Had returned. So here, if they said I'd, it would mean I had. But if we used I'd here, it could also be short for, I would do anything for you. So, I would, right, can also be shortened to I'd, okay? And I had can also be shortened to I'd. And you know that, you know which one it stands for based on what happens after that, okay? So these are the main points to keep in mind when you're writing in the past perfect and when you're speaking and wish to pronounce it properly. Now let's look at how to give short answers using the past perfect tense. So, the first question, had she finished the report? If somebody asks you, right? When you called her, had she finished the report? So you could just say, instead of giving the full answer and repeating the whole question again, we just use a short answer and we say either, yes, she had, or no, she hadn't. All right, remember that contraction? And how do you know what word to use? It's right there in your question, okay? Yes, she had. No, she hadn't. And what's important here is that this one, you cannot use any contraction, all right? You have to say the full form. Yes, she had. Or no, she hadn't. And here we definitely do use the contraction, okay? You can say, no, she had not. But that is when you're maybe something a little angry or something is a little more serious, then we say it in full. But in regular conversation, we just say, no, she hadn't. Okay, let's look at another example. Had they informed their clients, let's say, before the meeting? Okay, had they informed their clients means had they told their clients. So again, we do the same thing. We're using the word from the question itself, right? So the answer will be, yes, they had, or no, they hadn't. Okay, say it after me. Yes, they had, no, they hadn't. Good, good, very nice. And then the last one, had it happened before? It may be like this problem, okay? Had it happened before? So here, 
Same thing, you can say, yes, it had. And you could also say, no, it hadn't. So, with the negative form, okay, we can use a contraction with it. We don't use so much a contraction with the positive version. And here, in any case, we cannot use a contraction with the positive answer, but you can use it with the negative. So we say, no, it hadn't. Say it after me. No, it hadn't. Okay. So suppose I ask you, before you watched this lesson, had you understood the past perfect tense? You could either say, yes, I had, because maybe you've already studied this tense before and you're reviewing, or you could say, no, I hadn't. And that's how we give the short answers in this tense. Now let's look at how to spell and pronounce some of the regular and irregular verbs that we need to use with the past perfect tense. So, of course, you can use any verb with the past perfect tense, but they're divided into two sections. The regular ones, where we usually add only ed or d or whatever, which we're going to look at, and the irregular ones, which might change completely, okay? So, let's start with the regular. So, for most regular verbs, all you have to do to make that third form, the past participle that you need to use, or the past simple form, which is the same thing, is to add ed. So, talk becomes talked, right? We just have that. Watch becomes watched, okay? Say those two after me. Talked, watched, okay? In that case, they both ended with a T sound. Sometimes the verb itself ends with an E already then we don't need to add ed, we just add d. So, live becomes lived. Love, loved. So, we see here, we only added the d. So, it would be, he had lived. In the past perfect, he had loved. She had watched. We had talked. Like that. Okay? Now, sometimes you have a regular verb which ends with Y, like this, and it has a consonant before. So then what happens is that we cancel this Y and add I-E-D. Cry, cried. Study, studied. Okay, same thing here. Okay, say them after me. Cried, studied. Good. And sometimes we have a verb which has this kind of pattern. That when you look at the verb, right, from the end, it has consonant, vowel, consonant. A vowel in English is A, E, I, O, or U. And a consonant is every other letter besides the vowels. So, if you look and you see a consonant, and then a vowel, and then a consonant, then very often, and most of the time, we need to double the last letter. For example, stop, stopped, right? You see that? We added the ED, but we need to double the last letter and then add ED. Also this word, again, C, V, C, right? Plan becomes planned, okay? Good, you see that here. Say it after me, stopped, planned. Okay, good. So those are some of the basic patterns, the more common patterns with the regular verbs. With irregular verbs, you kind of have to learn them, okay? You have to learn them by heart. You have to learn what they are, how to spell them, and so on. They do follow, follow into, they do fall into some categories or groups, and that can help you a little bit, but most of the time, you just learn them by listening, by reading, and so on. Okay, but let's see what some of the more common ones are. So, be becomes been, I had been, have becomes had, 
I had had breakfast. Remember? You know that one now. You can even explain to someone why in English sometimes do we say had had because of the past perfect tense. <laughs> okay. Make, made, I had made. Sorry. No becomes known. All right. So, I had known. We had known each other for a long time. Think becomes thought. Buy, bought. Sell, sold. Write, written. I had written. Okay? Now, the one uh, word you might want to pay attention to is this word, read. Very interesting irregular verb because in the base form of the verb we say read, but in the past simple we say read, like the color red. And also this third form, the past participle form, is red. So you pronounce this like the color red, but you spell it exactly the same. I know it doesn't make sense, but that's how it is, okay? So, let's just say these again quickly. Been, had, made, known, thought, bought, sold, written, read. Okay, that's great. Now, let's practice what we've learned. So, I have four sentences on the board, and whatever is written in blue, the verbs that are written in blue, you're going to change those into the past perfect tense. All right? So, let's begin. Before the plane took off, the passengers find their seats, switch off their phones, and buckle their seat belts. Okay? That's what it says right now, but we're going to change it. So, before the plane took off, the passengers, put it into past perfect, find becomes had found, this is an irregular verb, had found, switch, regular verb, had found their seats, had switched, had switched off their phones, buckle, it's a regular verb, it ends with E, so we will say, had buckled, their seatbelts. Let's read it again. Before the plane took off, the passengers had found their seats, had switched off their phones, and had buckled their seatbelts. Okay? Good. Number two. By the time we got home, the ice cream, use the verb melt, melt, <laughs> okay? The ice cream, what will we say? Had melted. Okay? Good. Excellent. It. Let's read the whole thing first. It stop snowing before we landed. Put it into past perfect. It. Yes. Had stopped. Remember, this is one of those verbs. C-V-C. -C. It's not always like that, but most of the time it is, okay? It had stopped snowing before we landed. Number four. Before the babysitter arrived, who's the babysitter? A person who looks after children when maybe their family is away or their parents are away. Before the babysitter arrived, the kids, which means the children, go something to bed, but not go to sleep which happens with kids, all right? So, what can we say? 
Before the babysitter arrived, the kids put go into past perfect, had gone, very good. The kids had gone to bed, but not go, make it negative now. So instead of had go, the kids had gone to bed, but hadn't gone to sleep, okay? So here we have the positive version and we have the negative one. Let's say it again. Before the babysitter arrived, the kids had gone to bed, but hadn't gone to sleep. All right, so this was a little bit of practice to see how well you've understood whatever we've been learning. Now let's look at some common mistakes that are often made when using the past perfect tense. So what I've done is I've written two sentences on the board in each case, and what I'd like you to do with me is to find out which one is right and which one is wrong, and then try to understand what's wrong, okay? So let's start with number one. We had went to the mall or we had gone to the mall. Which is right and which is wrong? Okay, I think I hear you. So this is wrong and this is right because we have to say we had gone, not the other one, which we won't say anymore. Okay, number two. Who had planned the party? Or the next one, who had planned the party? So, what's the mistake there? So, this time, this is wrong and this is right. But did you realize why? Because of spelling. So, this is the correct spelling and this is wrong because it's missing the double N. So in this case, it was a spelling mistake. In the first case, when we needed to say we had gone, it was the verb mistake. The form of the verb was wrong because with go, we would say go, went, and gone. But we need that third form, not the second one. So sometimes the verb form is wrong. Okay, good. Let's look at number three. They hadn't been there before they hadn't been there before. Now, when I say it, it sounds exactly the same, but look carefully. Tell me what's wrong. These are contractions, and we have to be very careful with the spelling of the contractions. So which one is right? This one or this one? Well, the second one is right, and the first one is wrong. It should be hadn't because it's N-O-T and where we took out the O we put the apostrophe but this student was wrong because they put the apostrophe in the wrong place but not you because you know better now. Okay number four. Had you seen that movie before? That's fine. Let's look at some short answers now. So this person answered yes I seen and the other person said Yes, I had. The question again. Had you seen that movie before? Yes, I seen or yes, I had. Okay, so the correct answer is yes, I had. This is wrong, okay? Because remember, this comes here, okay? That's correct. That's the right short answer. And let's look at what it should be if it was negative. So, had you seen that movie before? No, I didn't. Or, no, I hadn't. Okay, so again, this is correct. This is wrong. Why? This is past simple. We don't, but the question was not in the past simple. The question was in the past perfect. So again, the had comes over here and this becomes correct. So you have to be careful also with the short answer. That's another area where mistakes can be made. And the last one says, when we arrived, he went out already? Or when we arrived, he had already gone out? 
which is correct. So here it would be this one, right? This is wrong because he had already gone is the correct tense. All right. So here we go. This one again, not went, but gone. He had gone. All right. So these are some of the forms that are some of the mistakes that are made when using the past perfect tense. Be careful of your verb to use the right verb to begin with. Be careful of the spelling, the contraction, the short answer, and the tense. So to review, you know the past perfect tense when you know when to use it and how to use it. And how do we use it? When you can make a positive sentence, a negative sentence, and a question easily and quickly. For example, they had called, they hadn't called, had they called. That's with a regular verb, right? Called. And we should be able to do the same thing with the irregular verb. For example, he had paid, he hadn't paid, had he paid, right? So when you can do that, when you can move comfortably and easily and correctly between these three, then you've got that, okay? And when you understand that the past perfect tense is basically talking about two or more actions that happened in the past and you want to show that one of them happened first. Whether it says so in the sentence or it's understood in the question, it will still be referring to two or more actions and one of them happened first and the one that happened first you express in the past perfect tense. All right. If you've reached this stage, it's a great stage to be at in terms of your English study. It's a very good level to reach. So feel really good about that. Feel proud of yourself and do some more practice. Write some sentences about yourself and about your life. Say, before I left home this morning, I had, and put down some common things that you do before you leave home, or before I left work today, I had, you probably have a long list, right? I had sent emails, I had talked to my boss, different things, all right? So write some sentences like that about your own life, and it will help these tenses to come to life, and for you to use them in the future with confidence. All right? And whenever you're ready, remember this is a series. This is a series of, uh, of classes so that you can move forward by learning the English tenses. So when you're ready, go on, watch the next video in the series, and it will help you to keep making progress. All right? If you'd like a little more review on this, you can do two things. First, you can go back and watch the video again. Watch any sections you weren't sure about. That's fine. Make sure you've really understood because we've covered everything you need to know here. So it gives you the chance to know everything. And if you'd like to, you can go to Ingvid where you can do a quiz on this tense. So thanks very much for watching and all the best with your English.